Welcome to Proteal's production channel. Do you want to subscribe to my channel before traveling the climax of knowledge again today? Don't forget to click on the bell. Let's start. All things are poison and nothing is without poison. Solely the dose determines that a thing is not a poison. Said Paracelsus, who lived 500 years ago in the skies of Zurich. This thought forms the basis of every drug we are currently using. Pharmacology started with this sentence. As a simple example, amygdalin, which is one of the active ingredients of apple core, turns into cyanide when it interacts with digestive enzymes. Low amounts are tolerated by the body. However, it is known to be fatal after 20 apples. Every chemical in the world is poisonous over a certain dose. Therefore, developing a drug is a very difficult process. The entire drug development process begins with the market research. It can be started for the treatment of a new disease. Or the development period may begin to find a more effective treatment for a disease with the drug. First, pre-clinical procedures begin. We can call it phase zero. New chemical entities NCE, are compounds that emerge from the process of drug discovery. These have promising activity against a particular biological target that is important in disease. However, little is known about the safety, toxicity, and metabolism of this NCE in humans. In addition, drug development must establish the physiochemical properties of the NCE, its chemical makeup, stability, and solubility. Manufacturers must optimize the process they use to make the chemical so they can scale up from a medicinal chemist producing milligrams to manufacturing on the kilogram and ton scale. They further examine the product for suitability to packages capsules, tablets, aerosol, intramuscular injectable, subcutaneous injectable, or intravenous formulations. For example, it is more difficult to develop a drug to be given directly to a vein. Because, although a material is sterile, it can increase human fever when it enters the blood. As those who watch our hypertension video know, it's called a pyrogenic effect. So even if you give pure water directly to your blood, your body can recognize it as a stranger and raise your fever. That is why such drugs are developed much more difficult. There is a number of tests designed to determine the major toxicities of a novel compound prior to first use in humans. It is a legal requirement that an assessment of major organ toxicity be performed effects on the heart and lungs, brain, kidney, liver and digestive system, as well as effects on other parts of the body that might be affected by the drug. Increasingly, these tests are made using in vitro methods, with isolated cells, but many tests can only be made by using experimental animals to demonstrate the complex interplay of metabolism and drug exposure on toxicity. After it is determined that the new chemical entities is completely harmless, clinical trials are started. Clinical trials involve four steps. Phase 1 trials, usually in healthy volunteers, determine safety and dosing. In other words, how this drug will work in a very healthy individual is controlled. If it harms the healthy volunteers at this stage, it will never be able to move on to the next stage. Phase 2 trials are used to get an initial reading of efficacy and further explore safety in small numbers of patients having the disease targeted by the NCE. Phase 3 trials are large, pivotal trials to determine safety and efficacy in sufficiently large numbers of patients with the targeted disease. If safety and efficacy are adequately proved, clinical testing may stop at this step and the NCE advances to the new drug application stage. Phase 4 trials are post-approval trials that are sometimes a condition attached by the FDA, also called post-market surveillance studies. The process of defining characteristics of the drug does not stop once an NCE begins human clinical trials. In addition to the tests required to move a novel drug into the clinic for the first time, manufacturers must ensure that any long-term or chronic toxicities are well-defined including effects on systems not previously monitored fertility, reproduction, immune system. They must also test the compound for its potential to cause cancer. So, every drug on the market is actually in the testing phase. The world will certainly not forget the thalidomide disaster. Thalidomide began to be used frequently by pregnant women in 1957, especially thanks to its anti-vomiting and calming effects. However, during this period, the use of drugs during pregnancy was not adequately controlled, and possible damage to the baby was not fully tested. 
Over time, side effects began to appear in people using the drug. Side effects such as stiffness, constipation, and headache and muscle aches became common complaints in a short time. The main destructive factor emerged when pregnant women gave birth. Various anomalies were detected in the babies of women using thalidomide during pregnancy. The most common congenital dysfunction was children born with undeveloped arms and legs. Children had to live with many supporting equipment due to their missing development. Today, although the studies about it continue, thalidomide chemical, it is known that it can be used in the treatment of leprosy, AIDS and some types of cancer. However, it is never used in pregnant women today. In fact, most NCEs fail during drug development, either because they have unacceptable toxicity or because they simply do not have the intended effect on the targeted disease as shown in clinical trials. Candidates for a new drug to treat a disease might, theoretically, include from 5,000 to 10,000 chemical compounds. On average about 250 of these show sufficient promise for further evaluation using laboratory tests, mice and other test animals. Typically, about 10 of these qualify for tests on humans. A study conducted by the Tufts Center for the Study of Drug Development covering the 2006 to 2015 found that only 9.6% of drugs that started phase 1 trials were eventually approved for marketing. The high failure rates associated with pharmaceutical development are referred to as the attrition rate problem. Careful decision making during drug development is essential to avoid costly failures. One 2010 study assessed both capitalized and out-of-pocket costs for bringing a single new drug to market as about US$1.8 billion. United States. The average cost for a pivotal trial to demonstrate its equivalence or superiority to an existing approved drug was US$347 million. In an analysis of the drug development costs for 98 companies over a decade, the average cost per drug developed and approved by a single drug company was $350 million. But for companies that approved between 8 and 13 drugs over 10 years, the cost per drug went as high as $5.5 billion, due mainly to geographic expansion for marketing and ongoing costs for Phase 4 trials and continuous monitoring for safety. In short, every failed drug development attempt is reflected as a cost to already existing drugs. Also, money is not only spent on developing the drug. Even if you make the best medicine in the world, you cannot find a place on the pharmacy shelves after any physician has prescribed it. Therefore, pharmaceutical companies must constantly interact with physicians. They sponsor many events. The money needed to promote their medication and get approval from each country is as much as the money spent on developing drugs. After all this process is over, the cost of an average drug's shelf may exceed the annual income of a country in South Africa. I'm sure many of you have this question in mind. Is it worth all this? Why is it treated so finely and our ancestors' treatments are forgotten? It is very difficult to determine the success rate of some things. But success in medicine can be directly linked to life expectancy. For example, if insulin had not been produced through all these processes, many type 1 diabetes patients would have died before they entered puberty. Millions of patients would die every year because there were no antibiotics from very simple infestations. Just think of a day when you cannot relieve your pain. You will understand very well what we are saying. That's why we can say that modern pharmacology is successful. You should listen to the warnings of the physicians for effective treatment. Follow the rules of use of the drugs and consult your pharmacists or physicians for the unexpected effects. Hoping to see you in happy tomorrows where nobody is sick. Take care of yourselves. My next video will be about the Second World War and the Nazis. Did Hitler kill millions of people because he suffered from venereal disease from a Jewish prostitute? Stay tuned for all and more. The sources of all the information said in this video are given in the description section. Please comment to make corrections or additions. If you still have not subscribed, you can subscribe and like the video. Take care yourself. Ciao ciao.